What's going on guys, welcome back to another video. Today I thought I'd spice up a bit and bring on a guest to talk about the latest Chelsea transfer news. Uh, Aubameyang, Fafana, they've all been heating up right now. And there's one man who's been propping them both on his Twitter recently. So, born Alex Goldberg, how are you mate? I'm well Felix, good to have, you know, I was about to say have you on because that's what our dynamic has been so far. It's good to be on. I'm doing well. I'm starving though for you know, Fofana to be official. And I really can't be bothered by much else. But maybe I actually do have a more pro Aubameyang take than some others. So, yeah, I'm excited to get into it. Yeah, well, that's exactly why I brought you on, mate. Uh, it's all been heating up. And you, you've you been propping Aubameyang quite a lot. So we're going to start with that one because I think it's been um, I think it's been more prominent than the other ones right now. I think it's the closest one to being done. And I'd say with Fofana, even though it's a big price, people are going at Aubameyang more than Fofana for me. Because he is 33, right, if I'm not wrong? He's 33 years yes, old. Yes, yep. And everyone kind of in their head, they have his time at Arsenal in their mind and how it all ended, especially having just watched All or Nothing. And suddenly we're paying, well, around 20 million, but like if you add an Alonso, quite a lot for a player that ended it badly in the Premier League. He even has an Arsenal tattoo, which is a sticking point for a lot of people. So um, I just thought, just tell me your thoughts on the transfer. We're looking at around 15 million plus Alonso. That's uh, that's around the price. What do you think of the price? What do you think of the player? Uh, first of all, couldn't care less about the tattoo. Couldn't care less. Like, yeah. whatever. Some people have a lot of tattoos, so they decide to not care so much. Like, you know the age-old saying? Well, it's not really an age-old saying, but, like, the rule for tattoos is, like, don't get a girlfriend or even a wife tattooed, right? Because that could end in a breakup or divorce. Like, your kids, fine. But don't get, you know, a woman or, or vice versa. Don't get your man tattooed. But, like... People who have a lot of tattoos, they're willing to kind of take those risks. And for this instance, aren't in the tattoo his kids? Like, isn't he walking down the tunnel at the Emirates or something like that? I, I think that's what the tattoo is. So anyway, I, I shouldn't spend so much time talking about a tattoo. But like, that I couldn't mean less to me. I mean, big whoop. Like, Arsenal's still part of his story, is it not? It is, you know? Yeah, so, I mean, it's interesting when we bring up Arsenal because in the past, or maybe like the last five to ten years... It's been a situation mostly where the old Chelsea players go into Arsenal right. and not having the best time there, and we take their best players. I mean, if you look at Giroud, we took him, and he was great for us when he played. Uh, we took Fabregas from them, but they took Louise and Willian, and they didn't have yeah. the best time. So, oh, I love the yeah, I, I love the relationship we've had with them recently for sure. I mean, even no offense to Petr Cech, but it didn't go that well for him at Arsenal, yeah. or at least it did in the Europa League final. But anyway, I digress. On to the important matters of obviously like Aubameyang and can he actually offer anything right now? I mean, I absolutely think he can, and I think way too many people are caught up with how he was at Arsenal, like you were saying. But I also think like how he was at Arsenal was a bit of the situation of when you grade someone at Manchester United in the last five plus years. Like, how fairly can you grade someone who has been meh at Manchester United the last five plus years? Like if the eye test on a Harry Maguire, and we might get to him, but if the eye test on a Harry Maguire is concerning, fair. Like he's obviously not an elite center back. But, you know, even with a Harry Maguire, and trust me, well, I want him nowhere near any team I support. And that's just because I don't rate him all that much. But uh, the eye test on Harry Maguire is not great. But then again, Harry Maguire is still a bit of a victim of how dysfunctional United are, right? Maybe the system they play. But let's you know use another example, Pogba. Some of that is his fault. Some of that is United and, and their dysfunction. So I just bring that up. Like It's been really hard to judge anyone at United the last five plus years because they've been so dysfunctional, Felix. So dysfunctional. So like eye test matters a little bit. So if you're not convinced by the eye test, then fine. Like Forget the other context. But to now bring it to Aubameyang and Arsenal. Like, why are we also overlooking the fact that, you know, he had good seasons at Arsenal? I think two back-to-back -back seasons of scoring 22 goals in league, I believe. And under Arteta, I know that overall they seem cohesive and moving the right direction now. And so, fine, if he wasn't good recently, then maybe that's like a stain on him a little bit. But overall, they've been a bit of a Mr. Potato Head recently, Felix, meaning like so many random parts, right? Like they've been trying to go in with the new, out with the old, but they've probably done that aggressively a, a little bit and they haven't had a balance to their squad. And I don't think Aubameyang fit on their team anymore. You know, you could probably say when he should have left or ended it, you know, if, if we're just going to play hindsight, it was probably after he had a great performance against us in the FA Cup final, right? A couple years back. Yeah, it was like, all the, the sign the ting, right? That was exactly. only two years ago. Yeah, he absolutely out 
you know, just completely put Zuma in the ground. I still remember the move yeah. he made to the right and then to the left, and, and what a great finish. And, you know, I, sometimes people just, you know, stay at a club a little bit too long, and I think the end of their story at a club can kind of define, you know, the current opinion on a player. But so if he's not that far removed from 22 goals in back-to-back -back seasons in the Premier League, and then for people who think he's washed up, I know it's a different league, but he goes to La Liga, and that half a season, Felix, he had at Barcelona was tremendous. Like it was, tre it was tremendous. And by the way, like you know, take comps with a grain of salt. I get it. You know, player comps, highlights. It's dangerous to judge anything off of a YouTube highlight or anything like that. But you look at the finishes he had at Barcelona. It wasn't all just happens. It was everything that we're missing. It was everything that we're missing. It was all types of finishes within the box: curlers, hard shots to the top right corner. Obviously, you know good poaching finishes which he's very good at which by the way like if we can't reinvent our attack right now well don't we need a guy that can put in the chance that kai Havertz got last weekend kai had a great performance yeah. but don't we need the guy to put in the reese james cross that we are kind of reliant on right now because we can't completely transform our attack we absolutely do but he's also this guy you play in you know uh, if we can get kovacic back fit you know what has kovacic improved so much lately his through balls right kovacic is probably our best in the team at, at putting in a nice through ball he had a great one in preseason obamiang is so good at taking that in stride and chipping it you know i know Chips are not something you should rely on, but that's also in Aubameyang's bag. So I'm just saying, like, if he's not that far removed from having good seasons in the Premier League, and then just based on, like, you know, the eye test for ability, does he still have it? Does he still have pace? Can he still finish? You know, and I know it's La Liga, but it's still, like, it's still Barcelona, and they absolutely thrashed Real Madrid, who won the Champions League, yeah, right? I mean, La Liga, La Liga, sorry, just cut you off, but La Liga is known as the most defensive league in, in, in uh, Europe's top five leagues. So to score there is no mean feat, really. I'm not asking for 15 to 20 goals. I'm not asking for a repeat of the 22 goals. I'm asking him to come in and, when he plays, be a threat to score, right? To go out there and, and to help us in that department, because that's what we need help with. I'm not asking him to create loads of chances. He's not going to do that. I'm not asking him to be necessarily tidy and efficient, you know, with every bit of attacking play. I'm not asking him to come in and be a dressing room leader. What I am asking him to do, let me just quickly touch on that and I'll stop talking. People have their concerns also because, like you mentioned, all or nothing and just kind of like the personality side of things. Is he going to come in? Is he going to take it seriously, et cetera, et cetera? I would hope that in Tuchel trying to communicate to him how much he wants him, how he wants to come back, right, everything you know, wants to be reunited with Aubameyang, I would hope in talks there, Aubameyang certainly understands why he's being brought in. You know, so, hey, we don't need you to be a leader. We're not going to have this false hope that we had with Lukaku where you're going to just put everybody under your wing, right, all these young attackers, and you're going to be, you know, that elder statesman to them. No, 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 no. You're going to come in. You're going to understand what we're trying to do here. You're going to understand that we need you to score some goals for us, absolutely. And we just need you to be a pro. Not a model pro, just a pro. That's it. And I know there's a great quote from Tuchel going around about how when Aubameyang would stroll in late, it was hard to always get on him because he would come in with a big smile. I, it's funny, N'Golo Conte is, is notorious for being late at Chelsea. I understand Conte's a much better pro than Aubameyang. But you get my point. Yeah. As long as he's not a major distraction, he's not taking away from the dressing room. And he can just stay fit, which he's pretty good at, you know, for the most part. And, and he can score when we give him the opportunity to stop gap signing. And as long as the contract length and everything like that resembles a stop gap signing, you know, like as long as, you know, the contract looks like what we're bringing him in for, you know, a, a, a temporary solution to help us score some more goals. I, I don't get the fuss. I don't get the fuss. Yeah, no, I completely understand that. I think that. The temporary signing is the main thing. There were already reports that he's just a stopgap and then we might go for Liao or Nkunku, who I know are two great players, hypotheticals, but they're great players. And I think what you touched on there, in terms of him finishing at Arsenal, I don't think you can doubt that Aubameyang is a great player. I think that him going to Barcelona in halfway through a season and just smashing it straight away, it proves to you that it was just an environment thing, wasn't it? It was just him, Arteta, it kind of just broke down. And I think that we have Thomas Tuchel, who had an incredible relationship with Aubameyang. So, like, you have to have confidence in that, right? Mm -hmm. When you brought up him being late all the time, too, like, that's clearly something that him and Tuchel have worked out. He's not going to be disrespectful and come in and think like he owned the place, but I think Tuchel will, will know how to deal with Aubameyang, and I think he can get the best out of us. Now, the last question I wanted to ask was, you kind of touched on it. I'll ask two more questions. How many goals would Aubameyang have to score to be a successful transfer? Or is it not about the goals? Because you touched on him just being just being lively. 
Yeah. Well, no, I mean, it, it should be about the goals, right? Because, you know, I, I don't think you're bringing him in at all, you know, even to a lesser extent of why you bring in Sterling. Like, Sterling's going to need to score an assist for us, obviously, for us to grade the transfer, you know, really positively. With that said, Sterling, you know, even if he was 33, which he's not, you know, you, you would look at Sterling just impacting her overall performance and be a little lighter on the product, you know, the goals and assists from Sterling, where, you know, through two games, yeah, he has an assist, but once again, you felt his impact in other ways. You're not I mean, really going... Like when they saw him dribbling in preseason and versus Everton, that was enough for us to be like, we haven't seen this since Hazard, really, or maybe absolutely. Pulisic in lockdown. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I'd argue he's already done better hold-up play than Lukaku did for us, you know? And now I'm not <laughs> even saying we're using him necessarily in the optimum way, but I get why Tuchel's doing it so far. So, you know, Sterling, you bring in, and yeah, you hope for goals, you do, and you hope for assists. And to a certain extent, you're going to need to get them at some point, but you're bringing him in also to impact just the attack overall. Aubameyang, I think you're majorly bringing him in to score goals. I, I, I really do. I, I know, you know, back in the day, like, he, he did have more to his game. I mean, he could play on the wing, obviously. You know, I remember, obviously, for Bruce Dortmund, not that you have to go that far back, you know, the Tuchel days. If Lewandowski's striker, you know, then Aubameyang is obviously a, a winger, a right winger. You know, he'd obviously be on the left wing. And for St. Etienne, you know, he was a winger, really. You know, the pace is blistering. So, like... It's not like he's just a striker, but I just think the way he's kind of had to not reinvent his game, but just refine his game as things have gone on. You know, I, I really think you're just putting him out in space. And even against a low block, you're just, you know, relying on his in-the-box movement, his ability to be a poacher, his ability, by the way, to be a poacher in many different ways. Like, it's not just sticking out a foot. You know, he's not lethal in the air. But, like, he still comes in, and he's probably our best chance at putting in a Reese Cross that's, you know, eye height, right? You know, or the, you even have to jump to. You know, Sterling actually had this cross against Tottenham uh, the other day where he took it to the byline. He lofted it over. It's hard to come down on anyone too much because Kai, I think, was near post. If Kai was still in, yeah, I believe he was. And Mount kind of made a run towards the middle of the goal. So it wasn't really anyone's fault, you know, and Kukurea wasn't really expecting to go far post. But, like, there was this great cross that Sterling lofted to the far post. And I was thinking, like, that's actually a classic instance where someone like Aubameyang would just be waiting and just dink it in. You know, nothing crazy, but just, you know. So, obviously, when you can counter, he'll help just putting the ball out into space. But even against a low block, like, he can help you there. So goal-wise, to answer your question, like, in all comps, I would hope for double digits. And the reason why, you know, I think that definitely is fair and maybe even just in the Premier League, you'd hope for 10 or 11. Maybe that's lofty just because let's see how many minutes he truly does play, right? Like, mm. I think he's going to play a decent amount, that's for sure. And I'm sure he's under the impression right now that he'll play a decent amount for sure because I know he's liking life in Barcelona. And he still is an important player for Javi. You know, I know Lewandowski came in, but, like, he's still going to play plenty. So I He doesn't want to lose him. He doesn't really want yeah. to lose him. So, yeah. yeah. So I would assume the minutes would stay almost equal for him at either club, you know. Uh, but, you know, let's say Kai responds well to Aubameyang coming in. Like, okay, you know, Kai really starts to actually put in goals. Maybe that will temper a, a certain amount of minutes for Aubameyang. But, you know, he's going to come in because also, Felix, I don't need to tell you, like, we're just transforming the attack in terms of, you know, the names on it. The numbers, but also the names. So, like, you know, especially if Broya went out on loan, it's going to play enough, especially in all comps, to expect double-digit goals. I would hope in all comps we would see 13 to 15 and I would hope in the Premier League, we would see about 8 to 12, 8 to 12, yeah, I was, 9 I was going to go with 12 non-penalty goals, but that might be a bit much because you are right. Like, it kind of leans into this other question I was going to ask, but we'll we'll keep this one out. But just, like, does he make Chelsea's ideal eleven? But, like, is that even a relevant question? Because we make these ideal 11s before the season and everyone gets injured, so it's not really relevant. So I guess right. it depends on minutes. But I think if we crack that 10 non-penalty goals in the Premier League, then... I think we're looking at this as a successful transfer, depending on the wages that he's on. I hope that they're not too high, because right. I think the wage structure is something we can definitely improve on under the new ownership. So, the last question I'll ask on Aubameyang, we can keep this one short, and then we'll move on to Fafana very quickly, is there's this whole thing on Twitter, right? When there's a new transfer that comes about, obviously everyone has their own opinions. And if you disagree with the transfer, you get hit with the, why don't you back Tuchel? Back Tuchel, back Tuchel, back Tuchel. I think we all said before this summer, just like as a general note, give Tuchel who he wants, right? And I'm a big believer in give Tuchel who he wants, but I'm still going to give my opinion on transfers because sure. that's why I have Twitter. That's why I want to speak. So I think for me, this is the transfer where back Tuchel 
has been the biggest thing that I've said. And for me, that's because I see their past relationship. I see Tuchel literally, like every report says this, he is the one pushing this. He's pushing it so hard to get the transfer over the line that for me, this is the transfer where I can actually say, if you disagree with it, I will comment under your thing, in quote, back Tuchel. Do you think that's fair? A thousand percent. I, I totally get when, you know, my post pod co-host Matisse says, okay, back to go within reason. Don't go crazy. I have been saying that myself. Like I, I'm not saying back to go blindly, especially if we're talking about something that could damage the long term, something that could damage Chelsea when Tuchel's no longer here. We hope to maybe here say forever. Nathan Ake, one example, maybe oh, that yeah. might be my example. Yep. Yeah. But then again, like, it's just so cloudy to me. You know, clearly he, he appreciates the player because he wanted him back at Dortmund and I know he'd be a perfect back three player. But it is cloudy to me, like, where Ake was actually on the list if you could just take away prices, if you know what I mean. Like, where was yeah. he then? You know, was it a convenient thing because you were talking to City at the time because of Raheem Sterling? But anyway, I digress. And so like, yeah, yeah, exactly. And now he's got Kukurea and you kind of see that he was going for someone like that. You know, not that those are like for like, but he was kind of going for maybe someone who could fill multiple roles you know, in his current formation. Anyway, so, you know, back to goal uh, needs to definitely be a careful thing when you're talking about something that could jeopardize the long term. And we hope Tuchel's here forever and ever. We're recording this on the day where obviously the contract tar talks for Tuchel are, are, you know, even vocalized by him. So that's all well and good. But in reality, managers, even if he does stay here for a while, they just don't outlast most players, you know, especially players who are bought, you know, on, on huge fees with long contracts. So it, it's very dangerous if you're just backing a manager blindly and you have huge question marks if it's going to be something that, you know, could affect you five years down the line. But Aubameyang, that's exactly the one you back Tuchel on. It, once again, assuming that you treat this like a short-term stopgap signing where it's like two years flat, you know what I mean? Not even two plus, but we'll see, whatever. And, and, and not egregious wages, you know, something that is truly a bridge signing. And, you know, because it really shouldn't affect your long term. It absolutely should not. Like if this bombs, this shouldn't affect your long term. It, it should be something you can get out of. Something you could even terminate if it got really bad, you know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, I, I don't want to talk about that, you know, and manifest that, but it's something that's you know low risk to some extent it is and the other reason why i say back to and Aubameyang, felix is okay we know tuchel with defenders and midfielders and wing backs we have a lot of trust in him we know for the most part especially in this current formation he knows what he's doing the attack is the question mark right it's like okay especially because you are sticking with this formation what's your plan what's your plan with the attack is it always going to be so heavily dependent on the three attackers and the two wing backs you have out there you know is it always going to be well mason better have his shooting boots on today kai better have his shooting boots on today raheem better now you know carry the attack as well the wing backs better be getting goals and assists every game is it always going to be like that if it is i mean we're still going to be a good team because of everything behind them but we're going to limit our potential you know so what's the and plan is it with sustainable the I mean, we saw last season we relied on the wing backs and they got injured. It's exactly. How, it's how it works. Yeah. Exactly. So, so I, so I, I would think, just yeah, say, uh, if Tuchel gets a bombing, it's kind of it's kind of exciting in terms of like, all right, Thomas, what do you got? You know, I I know he's thirty three years old, and I'm not expecting him to just completely set the world ablaze. But like, you got Raheem. He was apparently the number, you know, your first top option for an attacker. You know, for an actual statement move, you got Raheem right away. Right away, you got Raheem. You're getting all these guys also out the door, you know, we would assume, right, that you didn't really rate. You're getting to completely transform the attack. You have Mason. You have Kai, who, who I know, obviously, you're probably, you know, frustrated with at times, but he's always been in your keep group, you know. So now you're getting a bombing. You're getting that elder player, you know, that you know, who's coming here to just put home some, you know, crosses from Reese and Chilwell and Kukure, et cetera, you know, just make also a threat for the opposition. You know, just someone they even have to think about. So over to you now. Like, you're, you're getting back down. Just everywhere else, but especially in the attack. Like, you got Raheem and you got Aubameyang, two different profiles. I'm excited, Felix, just to see, you know, what Tuchel does from there. You know, in terms, does it work? You know, because I think this is the last thing I want to say. If, God forbid, it didn't work out with Tuchel, right? It bombed. Oh, not bombed. Let me not say that. But let's just say it didn't work out. Yeah. Then I would really feel bad if... We never got to really fully see what he was planning or what he wanted to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now it's like, okay, if it doesn't work out, we gave him to some extent what he wanted. 
You know what I mean? So, like, I feel like he's now getting a fair crack, especially if we get the younger players like the Fofana, the, you know, the players that you can build around as, as well, you know, truly build a spine. But we're giving him that balance of everything. So that's another reason why I say back to Kwanamamiang, because it's truly, like, giving him now something that he hasn't had before, an attacker that he has a history with that he thinks will work in our team. Yeah. And the last thing I'll say on this is, for me, our biggest problem, not, not our biggest problem, but something that we really lack in this team is actually creativity consistent creativity and I feel like that hasn't been addressed this summer in terms of wingers which is how we as fans probably saw it initially you know I was bringing up Elise quite a lot even though that was very unrealistic but very creative player off the right wing however I'm interested to see how this works because for me at this moment in time as much as the Bamian can be a good transfer you know we say he brings goals but I don't think the focus should be that much on strikers. I don't like when the pundits, they come away from every Chelsea game and all they talk about is strikers. I'm like, mm -hmm. you, you aren't seeing the bigger issue. So I'm happy about this transfer, but I still think this creativity is going to be a problem. But the one thing I'll see if it works out is if we get Frankie de Jong. Because then I'm wondering, is Tuchel going for creativity through the centre rather than out wide? Because that'll be really interesting for me, especially if we keep this 3-5-2. So maybe that's where our creativity issue gets solved. But that's just one to see play out. And obviously, as we say, back to Google. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We actually filmed this a couple of days ago and I was just waiting for Aubameyang to heat up. We also filmed the second part talking about the Fafana deal. So if that manages to heat up and we do sign Fafana, I will be releasing that as soon as possible. So make sure you check out Alex on the byline and on his Twitter, Alex Goldberg underscore. Also subscribe, like and comment about what you think about the Aubameyang deal. And I'll see you next time. Time.